So this is going to be the last video for 7.3. This is still surfaces of revolution, but now we have washers. So if the region that you are revolving doesn't touch the axis of revolution the entire time, what you're gonna have is space missing. Now it could be touching the region, it could be touching the axis of revolution at one point, it could be touching that, could, could be touching it at a couple different points, but if there is any part of the region that is not touching the axis of revolution, then you are gonna have some space missing. So it is going to be a little bit different. It's still going to be radius. You're still gonna to have to find the radius. Um, it's just gonna end up being, you're gonna to have to subtract some stuff. So the volume of the washer is going to be the same as it was for a disc. It's the area of this circle part times the width but the area is what's going to change. So something like this, if you were taking this region and revolving it about this axis, you're going to have the space missing. So there's a couple different ways that you can think about the washer method. One way of thinking about it is you're doing disc minus disc. So if you didn't have this bottom curve, you would be finding the radius that would be um, this distance right here up to this line and so you could find that entire thing and then subtract away this part that you don't need. So you're always going to have a larger radius and a smaller radius so it's going to be the larger one squared minus the smaller one squared. Be really careful with the order that you're subtracting them in. In, the, um, in one of the examples we did in the last video the radius was one function minus another, and so you had something, you had one function minus another one, that whole thing squared, and then this one you have the radius squared minus the radius squared. It does take some practice to kind of get used to it. If you're doing it by just memorizing formulas, then they are pretty similar, and so you're going to get confused really easily. So it if you're good at drawing the pictures and kind of visualizing what the radius is supposed to be, then I think that's gonna be really helpful. So just like with the disc method, this one is if your axis of revolution is horizontal. Horizontal axis of revolution. If you're revolving about something that's vertical, then you're, you're gonna to have to integrate with respect to y. So it's going to be this larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared dy. This one would be a vertical. Okay, so we'll go through a couple examples. So in all of these examples, the picture is given to you. So again, that's something that you should practice. The curves are always going to be something that you should know what they look like. They should be fairly basic curves. The 3D shape, if you can't visualize the 3D shape, that's fine. Sometimes these are calculator questions, and if they are, then I highly recommend drawing it on your paper as well, what the region that you're revolving is going to look like. So this one, we have the square root curve, which is this blue one, and the parabola, which is the green one, and we're revolving it about the x-axis. So let me do this. So this would be your larger radius. This would be your smaller radius. So it's going to be pi. This one does not give us the bounds of integration, so we need to set these two curves equal to each other. root of x. Um, so that's going to be 0 to 1. That's the only place where these two are going to be equal to each other. And the larger radius is going to be the, um, the square root one. So it's going to be that squared minus the smaller one is the parabola x squared squared. So this one, this is totally uh, unsimplified. This one we'll do by hand. The other ones we were doing most of them in the calculator, but 
well, I'll show you what to do if you have to do this one by hand. So this one, that's going to turn into just x. This is going to be x to the fourth. These ones are usually a little bit easier to evaluate by hand because it's not going to be the entire thing squared, but it also kind of depends on what the function is here. Oops, I don't need that anymore. So then it's going to be x squared over 2 minus x to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1. So pi times 1 half minus 1 fifth. which if you combine those, and remember you can leave stuff unsimplified, but if you do combine that into one fraction, you're gonna get three tenths. So three pi over 10. So in this one, we have the same region. So we have the blue one is the square root, the green is the parabola, but this time we're revolving about the line y equals two. So the radius is gonna be different here. So this is going to be your larger radius. This is going to be your smaller radius. So pi. Bounds of integration are gonna be the same because I'm revolving about something horizontal. So I'm still just looking at the x values. And okay, but then the integrand is gonna change. So the larger radius here, this entire distance is this line minus this parabola. So this line is y equals 2, and the parabola is x squared. So that's the entire radius, and I squared the whole thing because it's radius larger radius squared minus smaller radius squared. This one right here, this distance is the line minus the square root. So 2 minus the square root squared, and then that whole thing dx. This one would not be one that you would be expected to be able to do by hand. It's not impossible, it's just really, really tedious. So this would be a calculator one. And you should be getting 3.246. So it is a little bit confusing because you have radius squared minus radius squared and within the radius, I have an extra set of parentheses here, um, within, oh wait, no, I do need that one within the parentheses, you're also subtracting. So it can get a little bit confusing. That's why it's really helpful to draw the picture and to be able to see the radius is defined by subtracting two functions. So if your radius is something minus something, then yes, you are gonna have subtraction within the parentheses and you're also gonna have radius squared minus radius squared. So be really careful with it. Make sure you are doing the practice to be able to figure out when you do need to subtract and when you don't, and when you have to do something squared minus something squared versus the whole thing squared. So this one you're just setting up, you're not actually evaluating. So um, you can, I can tell by looking at the bounds of integration that this would be a calculator question. So you would have to find the points of intersection with the calculator. It's not going to be something that works out nicely. You, um, you could do it by hand, but you wouldn't have to for this one. Um, oh, and there is a typo. I'll fix that in a second. So you would set these two equal. You're going to get that they intersect at 0 and 4.667. So I can eliminate those. I narrow it down to these two. And the typo is that this should be the whole thing squared. Otherwise, there is no answer, which should tell you that that is the answer, which it is. So if you, um, if you were going to draw this, and I'm going to explain how to do it without drawing it. So if you are having trouble drawing these, you can kind of reason it out with multiple choice questions without necessarily needing to draw it. So you should be able to tell that there is going to be space missing because you have this line that has a slope other than zero. So you have a slanted line and you have this upside down parabola that you're then revolving about the y or the x axis. So we know that it is going to have to be washer method so at some point in the integrand, you should have something squared minus something squared. So that's another way that you can narrow it down. So if you didn't find the bounds of integration first, you could have narrowed it down to A and D because the integrand 
is in the form of washer method for this one. So that's another thing that you can kind of do to reason it out with something like a multiple choice question. So we know that it is going to be this one. So this one we're gonna integrate with respect to y. I'm gonna show you um, a couple different ways to do this one. So this one, usually when I give this one when we're in school, a lot of people try it and end up getting an answer, but end up getting the wrong answer. So this one is a little bit tricky. So first of all, because we are revolving about the y-axis, that's why we are going to be integrating with respect to y. So this distance right here is going to be the radius. Now I can see that here the radius is different than it is right here. So there is something we're going to have to do in order to account for that. So there's two ways of doing it. One would be to find the volume of the entire thing and then subtract away this part that's like scooped out of the top. The other thing is if I cut it off right here, this part down here is a cylinder. So we could find the volume of this cylinder and then add it to the top part and the top part we would have to do washer method. So that's gonna be a little bit harder washer method is usually harder for people. If you do it by finding the entire volume and then subtracting away the part that's being scooped out, then the part that's on top is just disk method because this part is touching your region of, rev or your axis of revolution the entire time. So that way is gonna be a little bit easier. So that's the way that I'm gonna show here, but keep in mind there are other ways that you can do this one. So the volume of the entire thing we can do that with geometry because it's a cylinder. You can also do it with, um, with an integral if you want, but it's gonna be quicker to do it without an integral. So this distance right here is one because this is bounded by x equals one. And if I found the y value where x equals one uh, intersects, I think I said y equals one, but it's x equals one, um, to find where x equals one intersects this parabola up here would plug in x equals one and I get y equals two. So the height is two and volume of a cylinder is gonna be pi r squared h. So this entire thing is two pi and then I'm going to subtract away the part on top. So this region that I'm looking for is just gonna be from one to two. It's not gonna be from zero to two. That was the issue when we were in school. A lot of people did integrals from zero to two, but this function doesn't even exist from zero to one. So you're not gonna be getting the right answer. So this one is from one to two. This distance right here is the function, but because we're integrating with respect to y, I need to solve this equation for x so that I have something in terms of y. So I would subtract the one over and then take the square root. So I get y, square root of y minus one. And because it's gonna be the radius squared, I square this whole thing, which gets rid of the square root. And that's a fairly simple integral to evaluate. So y squared over two minus y from one to two. So this part is gonna be two minus two uh, minus one half plus one, which is gonna be two pi minus, this part right here is gonna be one half. And that's gonna give you three pi over two. So again, the other way of doing it would be to add this part or to find this cylinder down here and then add that to the integral up here. But when you do the integral up here, you are going to have to do washer method, which is a little bit harder. If you want me to go through that, I can do that um, in class. And this would be the last example. So this one is going to be very similar to the last one, but your parabola is now touching the origin instead of being shifted up. 
but we are revolving about the y-axis again. So this parabola and the line x equals 4, and then we're revolving it about the y-axis. So first of all, I can look at the answer choices, and I can pretty much eliminate d and e because there's no pi. Now it is possible that the pi was already plugged in, and maybe it um, rounds to 360 or 512, but with all of these being exact answers, pretty good chance it's not going to be d or e. So this one, I'm going to show you the setup for washer method, but you can do this one similar to the other one with disk, so you can find it as if it was all filled in and then subtract away the part up here. So for this one, your bounds of integration are going to be y values again, because I'm, look, I'm going to be integrating with respect to y. If x is equal to 4, y is equal to 16. So this is going to be 0 to 16. So the larger radius is this distance. This is your smaller radius. So the larger one is 4. So that's 4 squared. And the smaller one is the function which because I'm integrating with respect to y, I'm gonna to need to solve it for x, which is gonna be the square root of y, and then I square it. Let's show this that up here. And when you evaluate that, you end up getting this as your answer. So again, it does take practice. It does take some decent graphing skills. As far as the region that you're revolving goes, you don't need to worry about drawing the 3D. Sometimes it helps to be able to visualize the 3D shape, but it's not essential in order to figure out the problems. But being able to draw your region that you're revolving or what region is your base, if it's cross sections for volume, is gonna be really helpful in all of the volume questions.